Good to see you, man. Which one? Unchained. What are you really doing? Do they close the jump? I would think so. It's gonna be killer, it's gonna be killer, man. I'm excited. Can I hold you for a pick and It's a rocket that comes from way, way back in our past, all the way into what the future is going to look like, according to. Welcome to Occupy Van Halen, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 
Sebastián. Real loud, like this jockey shit. Here we go. Oh, yeah, baby. Did it really got me, baby?
love this evening. Good to see you, man. Live in front of your naked, steaming eyes. Oh, look at all of this. The world's press, the world's media. <laughs> oh, my God. This has been a very, very long, long time in coming out here. Turn me up out there, Frankie, so we can kind of talk in a little bit of a lower voice here because we got a lot to talk about. I see a lot of familiar faces. I see a lot of folks who... A lot of writers, a lot of folks from the radio, a lot of folks coming from the internet, a lot of folks from the record company and everything, and man, oh man, it's a lot of folks that I kind of grew up with out here. Which one of you guys from the press knows Lady Gaga? I got to meet her. <laughs> no, this is an interesting story, actually. Um, I was watching, like, New Year's Eve, you know, and I saw the picture of Bloomberg with Gaga, and she had the, the mask and everything. I thought, that's a perfect picture for New York City on New Year's Eve, man, New Year's Eve. And I started thinking about, you know, some of the New Year's Eves and stuff that I spent, you know, when, actually, when Gaga was just starting to play, she played at a place called Pianos. You might know it down on Ludlow Boulevard. And she was, it was before the spotlight found her. And uh, this was just a handful of years ago. What she didn't know is that I lived about a half a block down the street on Ludlow and Rivington. I decided, I don't know, about seven summers ago that I was going to go back to school and kind of have a little bit of a, a little bit of the college shit that I never actually experienced before. And um, Ludlow and Rivington is inarguably the noisiest corner in all of the epicenter of the universe, much less New York City. And uh, I became an EMT. I went uh, into uh, doing, uh, put on the uniform. And we started to uh, work on, I, got, I did my internship up at the 47th Precinct, which is the North Bronx. Is anybody from the Bronx up here? Okay. okay. And uh, I got to tell you, it was an eye into New York City that I don't think uh, many people have. Artist to artist, and there's a lot of you here who are artists, so I want to speak to you artist to artist. Haven't you ever wondered about some of these buildings and some of these projects and some of these places we drive past every day and you wonder what's behind that door? Man, what's going on in there? What's up on the roof over there? Because, you know, as an artist, everything you see, everybody that you know, winds up in your voice. And... I put on the uniform, and I gotta tell you, I started seeing some amazing stuff like North Bronx, Eden Wall Projects, when it gets about as hot as it is in here, and it's August. You know, first time I'd ever seen this, they take all of the uh, uh, extension cords, because folks don't have any cash, but well, this is no news, you know, and they put all of the extension cords together, they're all different colors, and there'll be nine of them coming out of the sixth floor windows, and they all join together at one beatbox, that somebody brought his radio down, six floors down, and they start to, and then they pick grandma, who's usually in the wheelchair, and she sits and watches the beatbox, right, and then the little kids, you know, the peewees, get, they get her soda pops, you know, from the liquor store to get her a Starbucks sandwich or some shit. I guess I did, I'd never seen anything like this before. Uh, sometimes, though, they would forget grandma. they could unplug the stereo, take it upstairs, and that's when they would 911 us. <laughs> and things that you would never, ever imagine. Like, we would stand at the Dunkin' Donuts, and we would uh, wait for the projects to fill up with water when it would rain, and we would know that the lights are going out, and uh, pretty soon we got to go running up there. Hold on one second here, kiddo. Um, <laughs> hold on one second here, fellas. They're, they're giving me the key here. I want to tell you, though, we're close enough to the holidays here that you look in the rearview mirror, and... Uh, I'll tell you about the best uh, New Year's Eve ever. Uh, we're close enough to, to start to wish folks still uh, close enough here. But uh, the best New Year's Eve was when I worked uh, the gig out at a hospital in Bed-Stuy. And it came, uh, this wasn't just a few years ago, it was after the tour. And uh, we got a cupcake. A fella came out at midnight and said, fellas, it's snowing. We ain't got much here. And he came out, it was a, there were three of us, he came out with half a cupcake. And we stood in the snow in New York City, and we split a half a cupcake for New Year's Eve. So I want to wish you all a half a fucking cupcake for New Year's Eve. It's, it's the very best that I could possibly share with you. Fellas, it's all apropos. Somebody get me a doctor!
out across the Manhattan skyline. up the back of those stockings.
tried to nice out there Frankie give me a, give me some give me some echo on here make the shit sound a little bit Yeah. Uh, let's really go for a hybrid. We're in a club, and you can understand what I'm saying here a little better than you here. We're going to go for Jim Morrison, does Stairway to Heaven. Is there a bustle in your head, drum? It's just a sprinkling for the late wheel. I'm sorry, I began to rip. Who's got a drink? Somebody got a shot? Somebody got a shot? Who's got a shot of something? Baby? Give me a sip of something over here. Order up a shot over there if you will. Order up something. Waitress, get on over to the side here. Help me out with a shot here because... I gotta, I gotta have a double. I got a long drive home, baby. <laughs> Where's the waitress? Give me whatever's in your hand, Bush. Give me that. Give me that drink. Thank you. It's amazing what they can do with a cranberry these days, isn't it? Ooh, that shit is digital, too. They're pouring some serious drinks here. Let's hear it, baby. Everybody having a good time so far? Yeah! We have a, we have a boulevard. 
it's Fountain Boulevard in, in Southern California. It's in Hollywood, actually. It's right below Sunset Boulevard. I got a lot of trouble as for a public service announcement when I said, kids, don't drink and drive, but if you do, use Fountain. Okay, let's get down to priorities here, because I'm going to reach down between Marlon and... It was midnight, 1961. Yeah. And I sat at the table right over there, and there was a Virgin Island steel drummer here, a fella singing in Calypso. My uncle Manny told me on the phone a couple nights ago that that was Eddie Barkley. He's still with us. He lives out in Queens. Manny! more importantly was that was the same year my uncle stood on this stage exactly as I stand in front of you and said hey we got a new poet a new folk singer in town his name's Bobby Zimmerman and he needs a place to shack up true story well it took us 50 years to get this gig <laughs> It was easier getting into the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame than it was getting this game. <laughs> and now I want to get real, real serious. 
because he's here tonight and he's 92 years old. Big hand for Uncle Manny off in the side. hear you. He says he's having the best time of his life. <laughs> Anyways, it's full circle, yo. I remember Manny telling me about most proudly when I first time I walked in here about the marble floor that you're standing on. He said it took him a year to lay that marble floor. On the last phone call, he's bragged about that marble floor again. <laughs> This is a temple. This is a very special place. And I am more nervous about this gig than I would ever be at the garden. <laughs> There's no hiding up here. There's no hiding. There's no fake vocals. There's no fake any fucking thing. How are we doing? All right so far? Yeah. Sometimes it, baby, needs something to keep you cool. Oh! Sometimes it, baby, needs something to keep you cool. You better look at it now, I got something for you. Tell you what it is. I'm an ice cream man, stop me when I pass it by. I'm an ice cream man, baby, stop me when I pass it by. Sing that on my flavor, not a guarantee to satisfy. Check me out. I got to put my money in Dixie cups, all the flavors and push ups to I'm your ice cream man. Sell me when I'm facing back. <laughs> okay. And all my flavor, all the guarantee to satisfy. Wait a second. I'm your ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by. I'm your ice cream man. Stop me when I'm passing by. And all my flavor, all the guarantee to satisfy.
probably one of the best gigs of the entire career. Maestro, please on the jump keyboards. Watch out.
go! See you later, buddy! Oh my god! If you haven't heard that riff before, you're not alone. It's from Van Halen's forthcoming album, A Different Kind of Truth, and it's titled She's the Woman. Van Halen came to New York City to play the tiny club Café Wa for a handful of journalists and VIPs, and singer David Lee Roth, guitarist Eddie Van Halen, Eddie's son slash bassist Wolfgang Van Halen, and drummer Alex Van Halen were on hand to play an 11-song set. Dave welcomed people by saying welcome to Occupy Van Halen as the club was just minutes from Zuccotti Park. Before going into the song Ice Cream Man, he bantered about coming to New York and how it took him 50 years to get the gig and how this topped the rock hall. Summertime come around, the first time we drove into New York, I remember the lights. It was midnight, 1961. And I sat at the table right over there, and there was a Virgin Island steel drummer here, fella singing in Calypso. My uncle Manny told me on the phone a couple nights ago that that was Eddie Berkeley. He's still with us. He lives out in Queens. My uncle stood on this stage exactly as I stand in front of you and said, Hey, we got a new poet, a new folk singer in town. His name's Bobby Zimmerman, and he needs a place to shack up. True story. Well, it took us 50 years to get this gig. <laughs> it was easier getting into the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame than it was getting this gig. Van Halen opened with You Really Got Me and ended with Jump in what club goers called a once in a lifetime experience. Stars who came out included that metal show's host Eddie Trunk, members of The Roots, and John McEnroe and Patti Smythe, among others. The complete set list is as follows.